Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to G Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And here we are at 4:30 in the afternoon on August 6th, and an eight mile an hour to 14 mile an hour winds outside. 101 degrees just dropped back from 102. Well, oh, let's back out 102. So we're, we're staying right in there around 102 degrees. So. Uh, it's a little bit warm in this room it's 93 and uh, you can see the humidity is down at 7% outside so what I wanted to show you was over here this gauge is in here just so I know what my battery banks are doing and I didn't have to buy a separate gauge to do that and it gives me a couple of USB ports to uh, do charging on there right now I have this um, uh, Bluetooth speaker uh, charging in there and I could connect that with my smartphone and have better sound. And this is one of those atomic lighters that uh, you uh, you don't need fuel or anything on it. You, well this one needs to be charged, it's been sitting there a while. But it has a little arc that goes across there and that'll light things on fire. But well, you see my batteries are full and they're at 13.2 right now at uh, 4.30 in the afternoon. This is just so I can remind myself what I've got out there. 34.50 watts of solar, 18.50 watts of wind. But the 18.50 watts of wind can't really be counted on because I've never had that much. And uh, what you usually get is if you get some wind, you'll get a couple of hundred watts. That's it. If you don't have any wind, you don't get anything. So you can't really re rely on it as a source of power. It's a supplemental backup. That's all it is. So for you people new going to off-grid, um, unless you can guarantee that you have wind every day, all day, don't worry about putting up wind. Do it later. Um, build your solar system first. Get a really good solar system, really good battery bank, then you're being set up in a, well, you also want to have a really good battery bank and you also want to have a good inverter and you want good controllers. Don't go cheap. Um, cheap will get you by, but uh, you're going to end up paying for it later anyway. And all that money that you spent on the cheap stuff is basically, you may as well use it to start your campfire. And it's all gone. It's a waste. All right, so... You see we're at 13.2 on the battery bank. I'm going to head here into the bedroom where I have, ha have had the air conditioning running because I took a nap earlier. So I got a little uh, temperature gauge here. Look at that. 78.3 in the bedroom. <laughs> 102 outside, 78.3 inside the bedroom. So that made for a good night or a good nap this afternoon. Of course, I might have to take those air conditioners out. They're making me lazy. So anyway, let me grab my little list here that I made of things I want to cover today. The winds have been blowing, um, but uh, I wasn't here to see them. And where was Bear? Well, I uh, went down to the OC to spend... My, uh, a birthday day with my good friend Bill and uh, I've known him for 34 years now and uh, yeah he's a little older than me he's getting really up there as a matter of fact he was 84 on 84 and uh, not doing really well health wise but uh, still my friend Bill so didn't want him to spend his birthday alone, and surprise, surprise, neither did some of his other friends. So uh, we all got together, and his favorite was carrot cake, so we had some carrot cake and uh, a couple of uh, <laughs> cold beers, which uh, he likes to call warm buttermilk. And uh, we uh, just enjoyed our, our conversations, and I cooked him a good dinner later on after... Uh, all the other people left, uh, made uh, stuffed poblano uh, peppers with uh, uh, cheeses and vegetables inside, and um, garlic chicken wings, and just 
really enjoyed himself. He had a he had a good birthday. But uh, I know he's not going to be around forever, and he knows that too. So I like to spend whatever time I can with him when there is a chance. All right. Last video, um, I went in and I talked about battery maintenance. And I was while well, I was talking about battery maintenance, I mentioned that if I was going to do it all again, I would probably still stay with 12 volt system. And I was kind of reprimanded for that, as I am 48 volts is the best way to go and all that stuff. You know what? I did not mean to um, imply that 12 volts is the only way to go. That was not my intention. My intention was, and I think I did say it in the video, that 12 volts has worked for me. So if I was going to do it all again, I would stay with 12 volts. Now, I'm not telling everybody else out there to build your system 12 volts. That may not be what you want. Um, you have to do your own research and see what you want. A few other things I want to mention about batteries. You see the gaps between the batteries. Very important. There's gaps behind the batteries where they're not pressed right up against the wall either. You've got to have airflow around those batteries because they do get hot. And the, har the harder you work them, the hotter they get. So you definitely want to make sure that you have airflow between your batteries. Make sure you leave gaps between the batteries. Okay? That's a very important thing. Um, and like I was saying, get yourself good controllers. I am very impartial to the Midnight Classics. And the Midnight Classics come in the 150, 200, and 250. And what that number means, it does not mean that 250 is going to be a heck of a lot better than a 150. That's not, don't look at it that way. What that means is that's the maximum amount of voltage that you can put into the system. Okay, but Midnight has a little clause in their book that tells you you can also add the voltage of your battery bank. So that's a Midnight 150. That's the bottom end of it. You, so I can add the, the 12 volts of my battery bank system to that. So actually, it's a 162 volt. So the maximum amount of voltage I could put in by tying solar panels in series and up in the voltage would be 162 volts. Of course, if you um, are like me and you've been around a while, you never max anything out. So if it's gonna, if your max is 162, stay 25% under that if you can. So I've got mine running at about 80 volts, and uh, it seems to work for me. I'm not saying that's the voltage that you need to run your system at. I'm saying that's what's working for me. The Ames. Okay, an Ames inverter. I wish I'd have known about them before I got started out here and I put that cheap Chinese um, power jack in here. The power jack worked for me. But I suspect it, it had a hand in uh, burning out my... Uh, my old little refrigerator and a, and doing a couple of other damages to my uh, electronics because it wasn't true sine wave. Okay, so they, you got to be careful with that Chinese stuff because they lie. They really do lie. And if there are any Chinese people out there watching my video, please don't jump on my butt about that. I'm not talking about you in particular. I'm talking about the Chinese manufacturers who are selling cheap products to unsuspecting Americans who want to go off grid. Okay, so those are cheap MPPT controllers. They're not worth their weight. Okay, so stay away from them. Don't buy them. Buy yourself a good controller. I mean, Midnight's come down in price, but they do have a great reputation. The only reason I have a rover is because my friend Andy um, had that rover in his motorhome. And that's a 40 amp MPPT. He didn't like it because he couldn't have a remote that connected to his cell phone with that unit. It wasn't designed to use it. And also, uh, one thing about uh, Renogy is that uh, they have all of their stuff in Celsius. 
and it's not in uh, Fahrenheit. Yeah, I, my midnight's in Fahrenheit, so I I can read my uh, battery voltages. Um, the rover does have a uh, a voltage uh, sensor going to the battery bank, and the blue line on the plastic is also a battery sensor, and that's going to the battery bank. So that keeps track of the battery's temperature. And if they get too hot, um, both of those units will change their sequence and cool the batteries down. So see, I was 13.2 inside, it's saying 13.5 out here. So, but still, I'm in good shape with that amount of power. So, um, air conditioning running, refrigerator running, I'll be going to be turning on the TV in a little while, all that stuff. I'm in good shape. So all, all I was saying in my last video when we were talking about battery maintenance was that whatever is going to work for you, you have to do your own math on that. You have to put together all of the items that you want to run. You have to figure out how many watts each one is going to use. That'll tell you how big of a inverter you're going to need to run all of that. And you want to go higher than that because you might add stuff down the line. You might decide that uh, you don't like your little tiny two-slice toaster and you want to put a toaster oven in. Well, you're going to need some extra power for that, so go a little bit higher. Now, because I was in a, a bind, I bought the Ames 4000, a 4000 watt, and they're pretty good. at They go really pretty close to what they claim they are. Um, some of the others don't do that. I showed in one of my past videos, you can look it back there and you can see when I changed over from the Ames, that the power jack was calling itself an 8,000 with a 32,000 watt surge possibility. And then on, in small letters, right on the same label at the bottom of that, the label on the unit, it says uh, pumps don't go over um, 2,000 watts. Now what? It's an 8,000 watt with a 32,000 watt surge, and I can't run a 2,000 watt pump? What are you, nuts? So you got to really watch them, like I said. They, they do lie to you, but they, they lie to you straight-faced, right, right to your face, and then they put the real stuff right on the label. So read the fine print. I'm not saying that everything that comes from China is junk. I'm saying that a lot of it is. Yeah, one of my chairs is way down there in the bushes. I'm going to have to go pick that up. I usually have them up here. The one that uh, is laying down there, that one has got a good place to, to hang up because i got one leg hooked into the barbecue, and when the winds blow, that holds it in place. But I'm going to have to go get that one and bring it back. I did water all my plants. Um, got everything watered out there. The peaches are delicious. The grapes are delicious. Great stuff. The broken barrel blew from way over there down into the um, gray water pit. And I've got to finish up that gray water pit one of these days. The only reason I haven't finished it up was because someday I decided that I might decide that I want to um, go to septic. So I have to dig a, a hole for the septic tank, and that's where I was starting to get all of that put together. But not only dig a hole for the septic tank, but the leaching fields and all of that stuff. And you got to meet the uh, the local codes for septic. So it, it's a little drawn out system. So right now it's just gray water. And the gray water is used to... Um, actually, I put it there because it soaks through the ground. And it gets to the roots of my trees that are inside of the grow house. And the trees will actually... The roots will try to seek that out and you see how green the bushes are around the uh the pit there they're, they, they're nice and green because they're all absorbing that water that's soaking into the ground too and i don't like waste so if i can get double use out of my uh, gray water i do all right well that's about all um i just noticed that on my uh subscriber list um at 5149 so, if I get one more subscriber, that means I'm crazy. Yeah, that means I'm crazy. You know, some of you don't know, but there's a police code that they use for somebody who's a little off their rocker when they are uh, confronting them in public. 
they call them 5150. <laughs> so, so one more subscriber and I'm going to be 5150. All right, that's about all I have, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is G Bear reminding you, give me a thumbs up down there. Don't forget to subscribe. G Bear signing off.